Okay, started. Got it? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Healthy Choices, Healthy Relationships is also is a product of the Dental Institute. And it was specifically put together for not only healthy relationship classes, but uh, health classes as well. It's, it's interwoven between the two. And um, this will make it easier. Thank you very much. It's set up really uh, along the lines, very similar if you've, you've worked with uh, Relationship Smarts or Love Notes, it's set up along those same lines as far as how the lessons are put together. So this is a, it's a 10 lesson curriculum um, and it, in, it has encompassed the standards, the health standards that have, that are almost in every state. So specifically for Wyoming, there are all the health standards, not all the health standards, but it does cover the health standards. It's part of that curriculum. It, it meshes with that, with the, with the health stand, health curriculum. Uh, we've had a couple of our teachers use it and uh, analyze its standardization, I guess you might say, with the Wyoming standards, and it, and it comes out, it scores in a lot of areas. It, it, it really follows along very well, so they've enjoyed using it. And so we think it's a really good addition to our healthy relationship stuff. Um, it's flexible, and I mean that by the same idea as Relationship Smarts or Love Notes or any of those, in that you can teach it, and don't, we want you to teach it in its entirety uh, and be faithful to the curriculum, but if you want to be flexible with the lessons, so you see a lesson uh, that's a little bit ahead of where you might be, but you're talking about that with your students, some, that particular subject with your students, you can go pull that lesson up and use it at that point. The goal, though, is, of course, to hit all the, all the standards, all the high points of the lesson. Um, and it's also, it's standalone, so it, you can teach it in, in its 10 lesson um, project, so you can teach it in 10 straight lessons, or you can merge it with some of your other curriculum, uh, I think Patty Bruce and Cody was merging it with the regular health, her regular health uh, prop programs. So um, it makes it easy to do that. It's it's very flexible. It's very um, teacher and student friendly. Let's put it that way. And of course, its goal is to help students with their not only with their relationships, but understand what drives them in those relationships because it is a health oriented uh, curriculum. So they work, it works this way. It helps them with their individual wellness. It helps them with their self-esteem. Um, it has guidelines and things that they can practice to help them relate to each other in healthy ways as opposed to, as we know, some of our students, not quite so healthy ways. Um, it also helps them understand why they behave the way they do. Now, is it a full-blown psychological understanding? No, but it's a basic understanding so they, they can see why, or it helps them see why they view things differently maybe than their parents do, or maybe than an older sibling does, uh, or even some of their friends. It helps them understand that a little better. And it also talks about the choices that they make and how that affects their relationships and the consequences of that, both the positive side and the negative side of those consequences. What they, what they do affects the outcomes and sometimes our students don't quite get that. They miss that point. So this helps them understand that the choices they make, what they do, has, a, has an outcome. And that outcome can be positive or negative, the part depending on how they approach it, how they approach the, the activity that they're doing. So anyway, some specific topics in this particular curriculum. Evaluating media, culture, and family influences. Um, working with our students, we know that the media, social media in particular, 
is a huge influence on their lives. But sometimes they don't understand that. You know, um, I had uh, someone I heard a while back refer to uh, our current young generation and maybe the generation before that as the head down generation because they're always walking around with their phone and they're always looking down at it. They don't pay any attention. I mean, how many times have we seen people, you know, we see it as commercials or as PSAs on TV where someone's grabbing someone and pulling them out of the way of a car because they're walking across the street with their phone. Our students are doing that. Um, you probably see it. I don't know what the rules are in your school, but maybe they walk, are allowed to use their phones in between classes and they're walking down the hall with their head down and they either walk into somebody or, you know, but they don't understand the influence that has and is having on their lives. And this curriculum helps them see that. Does it help? Does it eliminate it? No. But I think if our students become aware of these things and the influence that it's having on them, they have a better opportunity to understand it and change that behavior. Um, another part of this is understanding the development differences between boys and girls. Big issue because they don't understand. She treated me this way and I don't know why. We were friends yesterday. Or he ignored me today and yesterday we were talking like crazy. Well, boys and girls think differently. This kind of, <laughs> don't, don't they really? So this, this curriculum helps them see that their brains are different. They're developing at different paces. So there's a reason, in many cases, for why he did that or said that or why she did that or said that. And it's a lot of times has nothing to do with the individual. It has to do with their brain development. So this kind of brings that out for them. Uh, socially acceptable and positive dating behaviors what's right and what's wrong. A lot of times our young folks don't know that. They just carry on because this is what their friends do, this is what their older brother did, what their older sister did, uh, you know, or maybe even a parent did. So they don't understand in a lot of cases what's acceptable and what's not. You know, is it okay, which we know it isn't, to grab your girlfriend by the arm and pull her along because she's talking to somebody that you don't maybe like, or maybe you wanted to go somewhere else, or is it okay for her to walk up to him and maybe you know give him a shove in the chest or something because, uh, well, whatever, it's physical contact is never all right, but they don't understand that some of that social behavior affects their dating as well because they see that from someone else and they go, well, that's just how things are. No, it's not how things are, or it's not how things should be. So. Um, and also it helps them recognize and protect themselves from negative dating experiences. What's that mean? Well, just like I was describing, you know, he comes along and grabs her arm because she's talking to a girlfriend or another guy and he, want, he doesn't like that. Well, he grabs her, well, no, it's physical contact, it's not right, you can't just do that. So they have to understand that that's a negative occurrence. What else is a negative occurrence? Well, there's controlling and things we can talk about a little, a little bit later, but those kinds of things, it helps them become aware of what those situations are when they're in the dating environment. And then it also helps them understand how they can pull back from that, uh, things that they may not understand. Helps them with decision and stress management. That's a big one. Our kids today are hugely under stress, even though we don't see it a lot of times but as a teacher, I know you do. Um, they're under stress from whether or not they're gonna, apply, you know, maybe it's something as applying to college, if it's something about keeping their grades up, or if it's just a matter of, I don't have a date for the dance next week, or who am I taking to the football game next month, or whatever it is, they put a lot of stress on themselves for that. And this curriculum helps them understand that. It also helps them with their decision-making process. Um, and setting personal short and long-term goals. So many of them have no goals at all. What's your, you know, I mean, if you sat down and asked some of them, well, yeah, I'm going to go to college. Good. Do you have a goal for yourself in that? Not really. Or, you know, and it could be a yeah, short-term goal. I want to buy a car. Oh, great. Do you have a job? Well, no. Well, how are you going to buy a car if you don't have a job? Well, I'll figure it out. Well, let's talk about what it takes the steps that's necessary for you to buy that car. I want to go out with that girl. Well, how are you going to do it? Can you, do you know her? No. Well, you 
what are the steps necessary to meet this young lady in order to have, to have the opportunity to see whether or not you guys would like to have a date? But what are those steps? So, so setting personal short and long-term goals, they, they don't get it. And so this helps, this curriculum helps them do that. Um, so going back to the actual the, the curriculum itself, the manual is easy to use. Uh, there's no particular training involved. There's no requirements to be certified. It's kind of a teach out of the box. Um, it's very straightforward. It's step by step. Um, when it says minimal preparation time, we always encourage everyone to please read through the lesson. Look over the slides. Uh, there are activities associated with almost every lesson. You don't have to do all the activities, but we suggest you do at least one of them. Whenever there's an activity called for, you can look and see there might be one or two in a particular lesson. And you might say, well, this one isn't going to work well with my particular students, but this one will. So that's, you know, that's kind of up to you. You know your students better than anyone else does. Um, there's lesson background information. So it's how did the author get there? It's not real in-depth, but it's kind of an outline as to uh, her thinking when she was putting this uh, curriculum together and why she did that particular lesson in the way she did. Also, the PowerPoint slides, activity, resources, all those kinds of things are built right into the curriculum. So there's no real time that you have to worry about additional prep. Having said that, if you have an activity that you, particular, that you like, that you think goes along with whatever subject you're working on that day, whatever topic you're working on, you can insert that into the curriculum. That's, that's perfectly fine. In fact, we encourage that. Again, you know your students better than we do, and better than the author did, because this is written for a wide range of students. Um, and then the evaluations. Again, qualitative rather than quantitative. We don't care, in general, how much work they put out. We just want them to understand when they do an activity, why it was important and how well they did on the activity. Do they understand the, the core concept behind the activity? Um, and not all of them will all the time. but. They're pretty straightforward and they're fun. So it gets them involved in it. Uh, and if there are homework assignments, they're optional. A lot of students, when you say, well, now once you take this home and work on it, you're going to get this big groan. Oh, yeah, no, I've got football practice tonight. I, no, I've got plans tonight. No, you don't have to do them. You'll see when you look through it that there are opportunities for you to send something home with them, if you will, to get them to keep thinking about the lesson and the concept you were working on that day. Um, a lot of the lessons will say, as an option, you might want to talk this over with a parent, or um, if, you know, not, that may not be that your trusted adult is probably the better way to say that. Who is it that you trust that you will talk with? Could be your parents, older sibling, uncle, aunt, a clergy person, something like that, someone they trust, that it may encourages them to talk about certain concepts with people like that so they can get more feedback and help them in their decision-making process and also in how relationships grow. Um, I'm just going to run through some of the highlights. You don't have to have a, enough curriculum to hand out, so I'm just going to run through a few of the lessons and just kind of give you some highlights. Of them. Lesson one was the teen brain. We did, we, I mentioned this before. Boys and girls respond differently to things because their brains are different. Yeah, they're, But our students at this age, most of the time, don't understand that there's a developmental difference between young ladies' brains and young men's brains. It, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that it's just... But this first lesson actually introduces that concept to them. And it's helps them understand that not only are their brains different, um, yes, they know that their bodies are different. And there's nothing, you know, that they, this is me, so that's the way it is. But what's up here? What changes? Why is that important? How do we develop differently? And why, why does it seem that, at least sometimes seems that way, that young ladies are a little more mature at a certain age than the young men are? And then there's a subtle switch to that where the young boys catch or the young men catch, start to catch up. Why is that? It's biology. And if they understand a little bit more of that, again, this doesn't go into really deep discussions, but it touches on some of the things that are important for them to understand. Uh, and of course, we can tell them all we want. They don't believe us. Your brain is going through some huge changes right now, which also affect your body. 
and there's nothing unnatural about it, it's normal, maybe they don't understand that. They may be told, but they don't understand. Again, this helps point that out. There's a big difference. Your, your body's going through some major changes, as we always say. And we were talking about our students, or, our, or personally our kids. It's the raging hormones. They, you know, they, this is going on in their brain. Guys think differently than girls think. A lot of it is why. And this, is, again, just touches on that subject to make them more aware. Media messages. <laughs> Social messages, the difference between men and women, young ladies and young men. Uh, is there any doubt that social messages have a huge influence on how most of our young folks react or act? Actually, if you put it that way, are is there any doubt that social messages have a huge influence on us? At, in, a, in my advanced age, they have a huge influence because, but we're supposedly adult enough, mature enough to understand, ah, no, 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 that's, I'm not going to, okay, calm down, that's not, you know, that's, but our young folks, they'll see that, or messages pass back and forth between them, it'll get them upset, or get them to think about some, you know, something that's not directed toward a healthy relationship. So, and they react differently. Young boys and young girls react differently to those things. Um, what are po positive role model sources? Who are they? Well, I don't know. I'm not going to sure that I'm going to want to social messages coming from um, that I've seen lately on Twitter. Something I know I don't. I don't want that. But they have to understand they're going to see that kind of thing. We have to learn to take the positive from. It. What is that teaching me? Um, do we have any doubt that media plays a sharp, I mean, a huge role in identifying? and helping them to identify their belief system. What's acceptable and what's not? Movies today, even movies a few years ago. I mean, what's acceptable in this? They watch these things. They see these movies where guys and girls are falling into bed together immediately on their first, whatever it is. They think that's normal because they see it on the whole, on the whole big screen or whatever you want to call that. And they begin, to, they begin to believe that that's normal behavior when we know it's not. And it's, is it acceptable behavior? Not necessarily. Why is it? What's, what's that message telling them? So it's our job, and, the, and this curriculum does a pretty good job of explaining why that isn't normal, if you will. Why that's kind of out there, or it's different. And, you know, again, there's a difference between a Hollywood movie and real life, for the most part. Um, Self-perception talks about that, and social expectations for what that perception is. Um, peer and family influence. Gosh, do they have peer influence? Sure they do. But a lot of the times, no, no, that, no, what my parents do doesn't affect me. You know, what, what uh, my buddies do doesn't affect me. Yeah, it does. Because you see that and that may influence you to act either in that way or if it's inappropriate, that's not a good thing. If it's appropriate, that's good. So who's the role model? Who are you looking for? It identifies changes in what talks about peer pressure um, and the influence of social groups. A member of the football team. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it would be a great thing. Depending on, you have a lot of influence there. The coaches, the game itself, those kinds of things. Um, and it also explains to them that peer influence can be much stronger as, as they're young and they're, and they're teenagers. Because remember, we go back to those first couple of lessons where they're still developing and they still haven't learned to process everything, um, have to think things through to make good decisions, and so that influence can be stronger. It's like the old joke we had when we were kids, right? If you know, if Johnny jumped off the bridge, would you jump because Johnny jumped off the bridge? You know, well, there's pressure there. Everybody's standing around going jump, 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 jump. There's a video out there, a bunch of videos out there that my son's a and daughter-in-law are educators, and they will send me stuff every once in a while. I said, Dad, have you seen this? And it's a, it was a video of some kids telling a teenage girl to jump off this bridge. She ended up getting hurt, not badly, but she ended up getting hurt because she fell into the water wrong. But everybody was doing it, and she didn't want to. She was afraid of heights. She didn't want but she did it because they were all going, jump, jump, jump. Oh, it's fun, you know, it's fun. And I guess because they didn't want to be left, she didn't want to be left behind or left out of the group, called a chicken or whatever it is, she did it. She ended up getting hurt. So these influences are 
important to them, and we need to explain to them what that does to, the way, to their way of thinking. Um, and of course, our parents still influence most of our core values, whether or not uh, I just picked out a couple of political and religious viewpoints. I put political up there because right now everything's political. So that's a big deal going on. And, you know, we live in a fairly conservative state, but still, it's out there. And they see it all how you cannot, you cannot not see it. If your folks or whoever you're uh, living with watches the news every night and you sit with them, you can't miss this stuff. And so that, how does that impact them? Well, of course it impacts them because they see these viewpoints and which one's right, which one's wrong. Maybe they're not right or wrong. Maybe you have to decide which viewpoint you want to follow, but you're not ready quite yet to make that adjust, make that decision. So this helps them understand that there are things that are going on that influence the way they think, for positive or negative. Abuses and excuses. What does abuse look like? This is a big one. A lot of the young folks don't understand what abuse really looks like. Um, and to understand that abuse is not acceptable because, again, they see it. Um, maybe they see it, unfortunately, uh, in the house, uh, their parents, or a mom with a boyfriend, or dad with a girlfriend, and they see this kind of behavior uh, that is inappropriate, uh, physical, or uh, even verbal abuse, and they, and they begin to think that's normal because, hey, it's happening in my house, and then I watched Johnny's parents over there, and they do the exact same thing, so this has got to be normal. No, it's, it's not normal. What, but what is? And what does that do to your relationship or your understanding of the relationship? Um, and recognizing when it's abusive. Uh, this is something that I didn't realize until I went through all this. Girls tend to be less able to recognize abuse than boys. Um, I guess if you think about it logically, that's probably true. They tend to be the peacekeepers uh, or try to be the peacekeepers. Um, they try to want to fix things more than guys want to try to fix things. So this, this is an important point for them to make up. And also that most victims of dating violence are girls. That doesn't mean boys aren't victims too, but most of the time it's girls. Um, abusers can hide their attention, their, their intentions. That's obvious, or why would you be hanging out? If, they, if you knew someone was abusive, would you get into that relationship in the first place? Probably not. So. It helps them recognize that. And also, it kind of helps them identify verbal attacks, stalking, uh, texting 10 times every half hour. Uh, where are you? What are you doing? Who are you talking to? I saw you with Joe. What are you talking to Joe about? You know, I mean, those kinds of things. And it helps them recognize that that can be or can even lead further into abusive behavior. And it's not normal. It's not right. It's designed to intimidate. And that's not part of a good relationship. Um, talks about smart and safe strategies. How about personal responsibility? How about setting boundaries? What are proactive behavior for personal safety? What is it that you have? Do you have a safety plan? If you're in a relationship or you're out on a date and something happens, do you have a way to extricate yourself from that, from that situation and get home safely or get somewhere where it's safe? Do you have a plan? Have you thought it through? Um, it talks about that. It talks about the needs to do that. Ways to be self-protective. If they become uncomfortable in a situation, how do you get out of that situation? Um, what does it look like? You know, that kind of thing. Positive behaviors. The responsibility of both partners. Can we hold our partners responsible uh, for their behavior? And can they communicate their limits? What's okay? And what's not okay? So if they have good values, and that was what we talked about a minute ago, if they have good values, they understand what a relationship is, they can also set boundaries in that relationship. And I don't mean just physical boundaries, <clears throat> emotional boundaries. Uh, this is a big topic too, bullying and the bystander. What does bullying look like? Um, can you identify the behaviors of bullying, bullying? And there's an activity that talks about it and gives a list of some uh, behaviors and asks uh, our participants, our students, to identify, is that a, is that a bullying behavior or not a bullying? And why is that? Um, developing their strategies for self-protection, again, does it have to have a plan? What is it that will protect you? Um, and this is interesting, too, this primary influence on the bullying, media and family. Um, 
I blame rap music, but <laughs> that's just me. Uh, but you know, there are these influences out there all the time. They're, again, they're constantly on their phones, or they're constantly watching uh, videos on YouTube, or I don't know what they are now. Instagram, I, I, I don't know all of them, but they're constantly watching this stuff, and they begin to think that this stuff is normal, and it's not. Um, and as a means of establishing status, well, how many times have we seen the, the I hate picking on football players because I love football, but how many times have we seen the big, strong football guy with his little group behind him, and he's the, he's the guy. He can bully anybody he wants, but everybody wants to be his buddy because he's the guy. And he's establishing his status. He's, esta he's establishing a hierarchy that starts with him by bullying people. And they have to recognize that, hey, hanging out with Joe the football player isn't necessarily a good thing because how he got to that status in the first place was not because he was the greatest football player on the field, but because he bullied everybody to hanging out with him or whatever it was. Verbal abuse is the most common, or bullying rather, and cyberbullying is another one, obviously. It's a big deal now. We've seen that, unfortunately, with some cases of the young lady, I guess, on the East Coast that bullied her ex-boyfriend into killing himself or whatever it was. I mean, you know, this stuff, they don't realize the influence that it has on them. Care, consideration, and respect. What is respect? What, what does that mean? Why, why do we want to show respect to each other? What, what does that have to do with our interpersonal relationships? Well, showing respect for somebody is kind of the normal way of life. Making fun of people or teasing people which amounts to another form of bullying, isn't a way to establish a relationship. But a lot of times, they don't, they don't get that. Our students don't quite get that. Positive skills, modeled. Who models those skills? We do. We are major influences as teachers, or as, even as business people, the way we handle ourselves in public, the way we handle ourselves in meetings, those are models that they can, that our, our students can watch and learn from and understand that there is respect in business. There is respect between adults. There is respect. There's a respectful way to talk to people. There's a respectful way to disagree. There's a, a respectful way, if you will, of arguing, of settling a dispute, of conflict. There's respectful ways to do things. It's not always about fights, if you will. Kindness and consideration. Where do they learn that stuff? kindness and consideration. They learn it from us or, or from watching other people. Um, responsible adults from the folks at the animal shelter or whatever example you want, a youth group that I used to lead down in, in Cheyenne. One of the volunteer projects was volunteering at the animal shelter. Well, why is that important? Because if you learn to care for little critters, you begin to understand what caring is about, and you start caring not only for little critters, but for the other people, for the people that are involved. And when you start caring about people, you're learning the lesson. So it's important. Kindness and consideration it takes practice. Sure it does, because we all get frustrated. We all get angry. Um, I'm very fortunate I spent some of my time in the winter in, in Florida. I can tell you, driving in Florida is not fun. And you get frustrated, and you just want to go. <laughs> then you have to sit back and go, okay, wait, is it worth it? No, it's not. But I'm hopefully mature enough to understand that, but our young folks maybe aren't. They get into these situations, they get all riled up, and the only way they can think to deal with it is to strike out at somebody. And that's not consideration or respect. You have to practice those things. You have to learn that. We have to model it for them. <clears throat> decision making. How do they make informed decisions? <laughs> I want to buy that car. Okay. Do you, have you got a plan? Have you made a decision? I'm glad you made a decision you want to buy that car. Have you got a plan to get there? What are, the, what are the steps? Can you afford that car? Do you have money set aside? What are the steps to making the decision to buy the car in the first place? I need the car for work. Good. That's positive. I need a car so I can go on dates. Well, okay, but that may not be the overriding reason. So you've got to put all those things in. There's a decision-making model included in this chapter that helps them see their way through the process because a lot of us, I'm included in this, got reaction. Oh, I see that. I'm talking, you know, it's kind of kind of not about something crucial like a relationship, but something as simple as, oh, I want to buy the newest iPhone. 
my gut reaction is, wow, look at that new model. <laughs> Mine's two years old. I want that new model. That's my gut reaction. I'm hopefully mature enough to say, oh, wait a minute. This one's in perfectly good shape. It does everything you need it to do. Why do you want to go spend another thousand dollars on a phone? But I put that into the decision making model because I have a little bit more mature, I hope, a mature attitude where our young people, not necessarily. It's not about buying iPhones, it's about a relationship. But they'll see that they walk them way, as they walk their way through these decision making models. Um, and responding rationally rather than the whole gut instinct thing. First thing a lot of people want to do, is, especially young kids, young boys, is let's Let's mix it up. No, we don't want to do that. Let's think our way through this situation. What caused the situation in our relationship? Why? How did we get this far? Let's think it through. Let's be rational about it. We also are going to get this decision-making model so that we can now think our way through situations and hopefully learn to back out of a situation if it's something we're uncomfortable with until we can make our way through the situation. Now, I know it's not always applies to everything, but they don't think it applies to anything, some of them. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, they require more effort. That's right. And it can create more conflict and stress, right? Oh, do I do this? Do I do that? Oh, if I do this, she's not going to like me. But if I do that, she's not going to like me, or he's not going to like me. So you know, they build up this conflict within themselves, and it adds to the stress. And when the stress gets higher, then they start making bad decisions. So, the goal here is to help them through the process. Um, pulling everything all together, recognizing and how to manage stress. Because actually, stress can motivate us. It can energize us, whether we're students or in the business world or teachers or whatever it is. We can get stressed, but how we handle that stress is what's important. You know, um, when I was managing, I would be Stress, stressful situations dealing with, uh, in my instance, in my case, a, a city council. And you go, you, you have two choices. You know, you can you can walk out of the meeting and down the hall and punch punch the wall, or you can sit there and go, okay, what do I have to do to get this done? To get to make them help them understand what's going on here. What do I have to do? So I have to use the, I use the stress to energize and motivate myself to solve the problem. And this is something that we touch on in this particular lesson. How does that work? Can it work? What's it do for you if you understand what's going on? What causes stress in the first place? Daily hassles, of course they do. I didn't get my homework done. I'm going to school today and I'm going to ask Jane if she wants to go to the football game with me on Saturday or Friday whenever we play football. I mean, those things build up. Well, it's a hassle because I know Jane wants to go out with Jack and you know, and Jack's a friend of mine and, and they start building these things up and becomes more stressful and more stressful. So, also, life changes and catastrophic events, the loss of a friend, which happens unfortunately a lot, the loss of a parent um, or a, a close relative. These are catastrophic events in their life. An accident leaves them hurt. It, you know, these things uh, all lead to stress. They have to understand that there are ways through most of this, but some of it requires help. And this talks about. Um, active coping, change the situation. Oh, that, 